In this video, we're going to talk about Cyclone DX, Bill of Materials, how that all relates to some other specifications to make Dependency Track do some pretty magical things. But to take a step back, talk about Dependency Track, what is it at a high level? Dependency Track is an open source software composition analysis platform. What does that mean? It means that it tracks all the components used in applications as Bill of Materials, traditionally Applications are built on top of other existing third-party and open source components, and it's really smart to be able to identify and catalog what those components are. And we do this with the intention of trying to discover if those components have any known publicly disclosed vulnerabilities in them, as well as checking the components to see if they're out of date. Um, because we're tracking a lot of different types of metadata about the components, one of that piece of data is license. And although not a security issue, it does represent certain risk to many organizations. So what is a bill of material? In supply chains, a bill of material simply defines and describes the contents of what is used in the manufacturing and packaging of the deliverable. In a software supply chain, this refers to the contents of all the components that are delivered with that software, including all the metadata describing the authors, publishers, who made it, what version it is, license, copyrights, etc. Dependency Track supports a couple different types of bill of material formats. Uh, first and foremost is Cyclone DX. This is the recommended format. Second is SPDX. And third is Dependency Check. Now, Cyclone DX is a lightweight bill of material specification focused on application security. SPDX is actually two different things. The first thing is it defines a list of open source licenses. So it has over 350 open source licenses cataloged, identified with unique identifiers for each one. Very powerful. The second thing that SPDX des describes is a bill of material specification, and it's a very robust specification, but it doesn't necessarily focus on uh, security related requirements. Dependency check is a software composition analysis utility that is designed to identify components on the file system as well as determine whether or not those components have any vulnerabilities in them. It then outputs that to an XML format. Dependency check isn't a true BOM standard, but because it goes through the course of identifying all the components first before it has to check to see if there's any vulnerabilities against those components, part of what dependency check does is actually create a bill of material in the resulting XML format. It's not a true BOM specification, but in the course of dependency track, we absolutely do treat dependency check results as a BOM. Cyclone DX is a bill of material format. It's, it's written in XML um, and it maps to various NVD types. Now the National Vulnerability Database defines a couple of different types. They define applications, operating systems, and hardware. An application could be anything from something that you install to a library or a framework used in the course of development. Um, Cyclone DX takes that a little bit further, so it, it still maps the application, operating system, and hardware, but includes additional types. And those types are library and framework. And there's very good software development engineering reasons why um, we have a separation between applications, libraries, and frameworks because they do represent different types of risk to an organization. The format is, is very simple to implement. It's human readable, extremely simple to, to parse, and it integrates with native build systems. Um, to date, it supports Maven, it supports NPM, uh, a great old plugin is in development. Ruby gem um, is planned, but it doesn't necessarily rely on build systems. In fact, anybody can create a Cyclone DX document with very little knowledge of, uh, of the specification. Cyclone DX does support SPDX license IDs. It supports a package URL specification, which we'll talk about later. 
and it supports the CPE specification. Now, as stated earlier, Cyclone DX is focused on application security, and as a result, it doesn't cover every single use case. BOM specifications rarely do. Some of the things that it doesn't cover are the verification of what was installed has not been tampered with or changed over time. Cyclone DX doesn't track the entire life cycle of applications from the installation, operation, patching, or service packs, or removal of that software. Cyclone DX bombs can be created or consumed by anyone. They are decentralized. There is no central point of trust. There are no requirements on signing or verification. And this really propels Cyclone DX to be really useful in a continuous delivery and deployment environment where components and their usage are changing sometimes between minute to minute. And finally, Cyclone DX builds upon existing standards. It's written in XML. It incorporates SPDX license IDs. It uses the package URL specification. It relies on SHA algorithms for file hashing, and it supports the CPE identifiers as defined by NIST and MITRE. The following is a Cyclone DX example. In this example, we have a single bill of material and a list of components in that, uh, in that bomb. Now, in this example, uh, due to screen real estate size, I'm only listing a single component, and that component is a type of library. Um, we're specifying a group of that component, uh, how that component identifies itself, uh, what the name of that component is, what the version and description of that component, and we optionally have some file hashes. Now, Cyclone DX supports MD5, and it supports SHA-1 all the way up through uh, SHA-3, 512. It optionally also supports licenses. In this case, we are specifying the Apache-2.0 uh, license, which is an SPDX license ID. It also supports license names. So if something is not defined by SPDX or maybe it has a proprietary license, we can, we can document that as well. It's a, it supplies the Perl or the package URL. And we're going to talk about Perl in a little bit. But essentially what this describes is the ecosystem, the namespace, the name, version, and some qualifiers. In this, in this case, we're specifying a qualifier of type uh, of jar. It supports CPE. So as you can see in this particular example, the project, in this case, JBoss, uh, does, they have a, a self-described group of org.jboss.resteasy. However, the NVD classifies that group as Red Hat. So it's, it's not a one-to-one -one mapping between what the project, the open source project identifies as and what the NVD identifies them as. They are Inner, uh, they, they're, they are not one-to-one -one mapping. And because of that, um, at best, you can get fuzzy matching between if you're trying to look up the component to the National Vulnerability Database. Um, at best, you're going to get some fuzzy matching and um, as a result, some false positives. But uh, by being able to include that CPE, we can really narrow down on what this actually maps to in the National Vulnerability Database. And finally, uh, a flag on whether or not this, the, this component was modified from its original distribution. Now, many organizations uh, do take in open source components and they alter them. Maybe they make a bug fix or maybe they make a security fix or maybe they add some proprietary sauce to a component and opt not to publish that. Uh, the modified flag simply indicates whether or not the component was modified from its original distribution. Now, package URL. Package URL is a decentralized URL for describing components and they're placed within their respective ecosystems. Uh, package URL uh, supports an unlimited number of ecosystems. So if you wanted to describe Maven or Docker, or NPM, uh, RPM, Debian packages, etc., there are ways to describe those using package URL. Some of the things that you can describe with Perl is the ecosystem, the type, the grouping. Now, not all ecosystems have grouping. Uh, for example, 
in Java world, uh, the group ID um, is a requirement. However, in um, uh, NPM, uh, the organization is a optional thing. Uh, so not all components actually have a group, uh, but they all do have a name and they certainly all have a version, although version I think is um, not a requirement in, of, of Perl. And then you have uh, so, some optional classifier or qualifiers as well. And these are simply key value pairs uh, appended to the, to the end of the URL um, after the question mark. So what are some of the benefits of using Cyclone DX in combination with package URL? First and foremost, you get a fully documented list of all the components used in your various projects, the applications, libraries, frameworks, operating systems, hardware that is used, whether it's a IoT device, a mobile application, or a microservice out in the cloud. You, you know who made it, what version it is, etc. With the addition of package URL, you get some other things that BOM formats typically don't benefit from. First and foremost is outdated version detection. Now we can, based on the components ecosystem, we can identify if that component is out of date. Why is this important? The overwhelming majority of vulnerabilities are not reported through official channels. This means that they are identified, they are fixed, and sometimes the only evidence that that even happened is through a commit log or a social media announcement. Second reason is that components change over the course of their life. Keeping components constantly up to date ensures that organizations are more able to rapidly respond when a vulnerability is eventually announced. Package URL also provides the capability of performing some types of analysis that may not be um, inherently evident. Um, and, and that means that we can reach out to the ecosystem, to that particular project on the ecosystem that they're, that they're on, and start to evaluate, start to analyze the overall health of that project. For example, if I know something is a Maven project and uh, I know that it's on um, uh, GitHub, for example, I can reach out through GitHub's API and automatically start analyzing the overall health of that particular project. How many change law, how many uh, pull requests do they have? Do they, do they uh, answer uh, the tickets? Um, is the project dormant? Uh, these are all types of analysis that could be possible uh, with properly constructed package URLs. Non-public repositories is absolutely supported by package URL. In many organizations, shared components are developed so that the organization can build on top of components that they've already built. And we can track these just like any other component that we normally would do through public channels, just through private repositories. And then of course, Cyclone DX includes SPDX license IDs. So if you're using a system that has a license policy, you can um, track your various projects and applications for various governance uh, uh, according to policy. And finally, the hash support in Cyclone DX allows for integrity checking of your components.